Lesson 2, Seating Charts. Objective. Teachers will be able to design a seating arrangement which works with their teaching style, class size, learning objectives, class space, and grade level. Seating arrangement can either make or break your classroom management. The design and flow of your classroom plays a critical role in setting up your routines and procedures during the first weeks of school. A poor design can be detrimental to your classroom management plan. Consider this. Having no seating chart means you lose some control. A seating chart is a powerful tool for learning names. It also helps manage noise and student engagement if students are properly placed around the room in advance. Here are a few things to know before creating your seating chart. Knowing what your classroom looks like beforehand helps you choose the layout of your desks, shelves, and cabinets. Knowing the type of furniture available will help you decide how you will place the seats in the room. Circular, rectangular, large or small are all factors in how you design your seating chart. And finally, the administrator or school system may prefer seeing your students in a specific arrangement when they walk into your room. Be sure to check with them to see if they prefer rows or a group arrangement. Also, be sure to ask these questions before you start designing your room. It will save you drama in the long run. Let's take a look at how we can arrange our students into the classroom. First, you can arrange students alphabetically. The alphabetic arrangement is a simple arrangement and it's easy to learn names, pass out paper, and do testing. Next, you can alternate girls and boys. Alternating girls and boys is a very simple way to divide the class. And finally, you can allow students to choose their own seats. However, you run the risk that children who are chatty sit together. Be sure to tell them you have the right to change their seats if you see it turning into a problem. Once students have chosen their seats, mark it on a blank chart and make it into a permanent arrangement. Here are a few factors that can influence the configuration of the classroom. First, how do you want the class to interact? Minimally, this means you prefer your students to work more independently or have more whole class instruction. You would probably prefer a rows and column seating arrangement. It promotes focus. Small groups or pairs is good for quiet interaction and promotes collaboration on a smaller scale. Finally, large groups of four to five students is good for teamwork and cooperation. You should also be aware of your classroom size and shape. Make sure your preferred seating arrangement can work within the space and school furniture you have. Some configurations may not work with certain classrooms. Be aware of obstructions like poles, beams, walls, and other fixtures that can't be moved. Make sure your students can clearly see the board and screen. For more mobility, use a movable chalkboard or whiteboard if possible. Distractions. Identifying and mitigating possible distractions will help streamline lessons and boost classroom productivity. Things like windows facing a playground, 
nearby busy lobbies and hallways, water fountains, people using a pencil sharpener, etc. All can easily grab the attention of a student engaged or not. Try to keep these distractions out of your student's line of sight. Student age and size. Consider the number of students in your class. Your seating arrangement will be affected by your class size. You will have to be creative with larger classes. For example, I've had class sizes between 35 to 40 students. Every seat, including lab stations and stools, had to be used to accommodate my larger class sizes. The age and maturity level of students need to be considered as well. Make sure the setup is age appropriate. And finally, be mindful of students with special needs. They may have preferential seating due to their disabilities. Teaching style and objectives. Consider if the arrangement supports your teaching style and objectives, or will they sabotage them? Think about who you want to be the focus of the class. Will your class be teacher-centered, student-centered, or both? This will be a good time to refer back to your responses in Module 1. What are your learning objectives? Is it knowledge? Students will learn and understand the content of the coursework or skill growth. Students will develop a certain set of skills during the course. Acquiring knowledge will require more focus in independent work, which is ROSE, for skills that require cooperation, communication, and teamwork, group layouts work well. For skills like troubleshooting, reflection, analysis, and listening, use layouts that support independent work and minimize distractions. Sometimes you may want a mixture of both. I designed my science class in a manner that allowed me to teach content and foster listening and reflection skills, as well as areas where they could work cooperatively during labs in order to nurture teamwork and communication. It's my preferred setup. Now we will take a look at the different types of seating arrangements. First, we have the traditional setup, rows or fixed seating. Students face the instructor with their backs to one another. The highest communication interactions between professors and students typically occurs with students in the first row or along the middle of the classroom. Students in back rows are more likely to be less engaged. This setup is good for teacher-centered approaches. Next, we have the round table setup. Students and instructors all face one another in this setup. This formation can support whole class as well as pairwise dialogue. Many seminar course room arrangements may consist of instructor and students sitting around a single large table. This seating arrangement can also be formed using individual desks. The horseshoe or semicircle. This arrangement is like a modified round table. It encourages discussion between students and the instructor. The horseshoe or semicircle offers a modified round table setup where all participants face each other while the instructor can move about the room. A horseshoe setup can be particularly effective when the instructor wishes to project and discuss course related material in the front of the class. Next, we have the double horseshoe setup. This arrangement invites greater discussion than the traditional format. It is more limited by the backs of students within the inner circle facing students in the outer circle. 
However, students may also more easily interact with those nearest to them or turn around and face students behind them for group work. Next, we have the pod set up. You can either have groups or pairs. This is advantageous when students will work in groups or pairs with their classmates for a large portion of time. This arrangement communicates a learning community where students are expected to work with one another. This arrangement is good if you plan to have a more student-centered approach to teaching. This works well for group activities and labs. Finally, we have flexible seating. Flexible seating is the practice of allowing and providing many seating options for students. In traditional classrooms, students sit at a desk or tables often assigned to them. They may have limited opportunities to move around the room before an official break, but for the most part, students stay at their desk or table spot. In flexible seating, the classroom is arranged to give a variety of options. Students can choose where they would like to work on their current projects. Students might choose a location based on how they're feeling that day or what project they are working on. Flexible seating options can include low tables, couches, a cushion or rug on the floor, clipboards, tray tables, beanbag chairs, exercise balls, wheeled chairs, standing desk, and more. Flexible seating gives students the option to control their physical environments in which they work best. In other words, with choices, students gain greater flexibility and control of their surroundings, giving them the autonomy and comfort to stay engaged and focused. This leads to increased student engagement which is linked to higher motivation and academic performance, as well as improved overall behavior. Flexible seating also opens a space for increased collaboration among students. Teamwork allows for more creativity in classroom discussions, since students can easily work in pairs or groups. Here are a few tips. Tip number one, arrange seats so that it is easy for you and your students to move around the classroom. It's good to have easy accessibility. A teacher needs to be able to reach students during activities, as well as circulate around the classroom as part of your classroom management. Also, consider the flow of your students. Can they easily get up for activities, line up, or access materials? Make sure nothing is obstructing those pathways around the room. These are all things you need to consider when arranging tables, desks, and chairs in the classroom. Tip number two, label your desk or tables. Labeling your desk or tables is a useful tool. You can use the labels to create groups. You can use labels to call students to line up. I have used numbers, colors, and letters at various points in my career. Label individual desk. Label groups. Group one, group two, red group, blue group, birds, ladybugs, etc. Be creative as you like. You can use any type of label you wish. Tip three, find out the accommodations of students with special needs. Sometimes we have students with special needs in our classrooms. Your class schedule usually indicates which students have special needs. Usually the case manager of these students will send you a snapshot of their accommodations, which should list if they have preferential seating. Take these accommodations into consideration when creating your seating chart. Some students might need to be placed up front or near the teacher as part of their IEP or 504. Tip four, shut the classroom door and close the windows. This might sound like a basic tip, but you will be surprised how much noise travels into your room 
via the hallway or from outside. Consider shutting your door and closing the windows to cut down on unnecessary distractions from the outside environment. You might even need to close the blinds if your classroom is positioned near the field or playground. Sometimes students like to look out the window to watch other children play or participate in outdoor activities, so closing the blinds will limit the visual distraction. You can also position your seats facing away from the window in order to prevent distractions. Tip five, arrange seats so that students can easily see you, the board, and other displays in the room. You don't want anything to prevent students from seeing you or the board while giving instruction. If you are not able to see, it could affect classroom management and the lesson that is being given. Tip six, choose an arrangement that works well with your teaching style and management philosophy. This tip is important because if you choose a seating arrangement that is the complete opposite of your style and philosophy, it will be hard for you to teach. For example, if you are noise sensitive and you want your students to be more focused and independent, then you shouldn't choose a pod arrangement for your classroom setup. Rows would be best for your style. Tip number seven, create a seating chart with names by the end of the first day of school. Creating a seating chart will help you learn names faster. It will also help you keep track of where students are supposed to be seated daily. You can sketch a chart by hand or create one using PowerPoint. Some grading software allows you to create a chart via the program. Where to place the teacher's desk? It's a matter of preference. This is the most important consideration in arranging a classroom. Teachers typically place their desk at the front of the classroom. While being in the front of the class affords the teacher a good view of students' faces, there are advantages to placing the teacher's desk at the back. By sitting at the back of the classroom, the teacher has less of a chance of blocking the student's view of the board. Additionally, less motivated students generally choose to sit in the back of the class. Proximity to those students can help the teacher more easily forestall discipline problems. Finally, if a student needs help from the teacher, she might feel less intimidated by not being highly visible in front of the classroom if the teacher's desk is at the front. Placement of other items in the room. After you have determined how to arrange the desk in the room, you also must consider where to place bookcases, file cabinets, storage bins, and other large objects in the room. You need to think where they belong in the scheme of things. Some objects need to be placed in locations which allow easy access, while others need to be out of sight and mind. No object should block the flow of traffic in the room. Be sure to arrange these objects accordingly in your room as you plan your design. Remember, the placement of every item in your room will directly impact your classroom management plan. Final thoughts. Consider such factors as class size, age of students, and the type of furniture available when designing your seating arrangement. Match classroom seating arrangements with the goals of instruction. Change seating arrangements to suit specific learning goals. We have reached the end of this lesson. Complete the following activity. One, which seating arrangement discussed in this lesson works best for your teaching situation? Two, draw or sketch your preferred seating arrangement in the space provided in the workbook. And three, add other objects like the teacher's desk 
and shelves to your design. It's best if you use a pencil if you are drawing your seating chart. You don't have to be an artist, just use basic shapes to create your chart. You may need some additional paper just in case you mess up or need to start over. If you don't feel like drawing, you can use the seating chart PowerPoint provided with this module to create a digital chart. Just download the PowerPoint and move the objects on the slide in order to create your digital chart. You may print it out when you are done. Good luck.